Hi and welcome to DCO. My name is David Capetti and in today's video I'll be sharing how I created this trellis design. I'll start by going over how and what this is able to do. Then I'll get into how I created it by showing you the logic and at the end you'll see the time lapse that goes over the entire process for creating this. So let's get started with how this was created um, using the script. So let's go over how this can be changed. So we have the columns. We're able to change them in the X and Y. So we have a different trellis column design. Then we move on to the offset, which this is going to create the offset for the footing, which sometimes if you're going to apply material on the outside of the columns, then you would offset this foundation stem wall so you can accommodate for the outside material. So this is that slider. Then we get into the height of the stem wall. That is dependent on how far down the ground you want it. Sometimes if you have freezing conditions, then you know that would change. Then we get into now the footing. So this is going to be the size of the footing. This is going to be the height, so we can change the height here. Then this is going to be the spacing in between each bay. So I'll go to 15 for 15 feet. And then here we have a slider for increasing or decreasing our trellis. So the more numbers we add here, we extend the trellis by that number of columns. So I'll keep it simple to kind of show you the example here. Then we move on to here, foundation. Then we have the foundation depth here. We have how tall this beam is going to be. So I have it at 1.5 and as you can see, this also determines the subtraction of the rafter. So this is how you would subtract the rafter from the beam. And if we said 1.5, we have the beam here. So let's now move on to the spacing for the rafters. So if I increase the spacing, we're going to have more spacing. Decrease it, we'll have more. So. Next, we move on to the location. So this is going to determine if it's going to sit on top or if it's going to intersect by how much. Of course, this when, let's say if you're manufacturing this, what's going to matter is you don't want this top one to be too thin. You don't want this to be too thin. So this is where we find a good place where you can notch the rafters and you can actually place them on top and then connect it using an L bracket or some other type of connection. Um, now here we get into the extension of the rafter. So right now I have this at two, which means that we can only extend it by two. But if I said, let's say five for the maximum, we can extend these rafters up to five here. Of course, we would want to make sure that we don't go too far on here because then laterally we're gonna have issues. But we could also create some 45 degree kickers here that can support that further. This is going to be the size of the, the height of the beam. We can decrease it, increase it. And this detail of the circle is determined by this and this circle which are then subtracted from the overall form. So we can change the size of that circle if we don't, or if we just want a regular raptor without any subtractions. But this detail gives it a cleaner termination to the outside here. 
let's move on to the distance of the offset so this is one that i didn't want to have done before i show you guys so this is the outside face of the trellis then if we offset it then we can now offset the trellis design therefore allowing us to have an overhang for if you're going to be using this to plant something then this would be useful so you can have more canopy canopy and also if you have a person that's sitting in between these um, you would have a larger shade design now this is just doing an offset from the outside so if you did want to let's say offset more this way or the other way there are things that we can do to that surface which would be to either scale in one or the other dim dimension this way you can extend it just in one way rather than doing it the same on each side next let's get into the height of the trellis or the trellis material so i just have this as a wireframe but the interest the important thing that we have here is that when we change the height of the pipes it actually maintains the offset so if i increase this the line moves up and the pipe is taken basically that the material of the pipe and of this trellis is accounted for by being offset the radius of the pipe and the way that we do this is we make sure that the radius of the pipe is the same amount that we move move up the line segments and that's all we need to do to make sure that it sits right on top of that wood then we move into subdivisions so we may have too many here 20 i think 10 should be fine and then here we can divide it more in the other direction i'll be changing this and towards the end we extrude these and now those become subtracted from our overall form and that's what gives us our final rafter which is going to be subtracted from that original beam and if this beam tends to increase or decrease well we know that it's going to intersect with it and subtract it giving us the final result here At the end, we just do a pipe component to the outside, but I was looking at this and it looks good, but there's one thing I would like to do. So here, let me show you one of the things I would do is join the outside lines, flatten the input so we make sure that it comes in as one list and it joins it all together into one polyline. Now what we'll do is we'll offset this or actually before that because we have a lot of little line segments here let's go to simplify curve and now we can offset it say by 0.15 We can do boundary surface between this and this and if we flatten the input we'll just get this surface that now we can extrude down for if we wanted a different type of fascia so if we extrude that surface in the z direction bring in a negative we can now extrude this down by whatever amount and this could be a fascia type of design rather than having so let me copy this here unplug here and then unplug this one from one we have them separated also i have this i should have this as round and then this one also as round 
now I'll disable the preview on this, but leave it previewed with this. Now this may be more of something that you'd want to do, which is basically the fascia on the outside and the trellis being on top. Now we can also move this up in the Z direction by how much? Well, the same amount as the pipe size. So when we do this, we now have a little bit of a cleaner finish out here in terms of it being just like a fascia or a little outside beam that holds the entire trellis. The trellis is sitting on the rafters and those rafters sit on the beam which get distributed down to the columns and to the foundation. So here towards the end, what I'll be doing is showing you the entire process, uh, but it's going to be a time lapse because this is something that I did um, more as an exercise. And there was a portion that I redid, which were the rafters. I took a different approach at the beginning. Then at the end, I changed it back to using contours. So those are the things that I would keep an eye out on. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to let me know. This will be available on my website under the free resources tab and later on into my script vault and script store. So if you have any questions, like I said, make sure to let me know. I post videos like these every week where you can learn exercises, techniques, um, so you can use parametric design for your architecture.